Welcome friends to this video. I am in a remote location this week, so I apologize if I have bad lighting or sound. Uh, I couldn't stop making the next video, which we're going to talk about a, an advanced version of Battleship. So last week, if you take a look at our YouTube channel, Knowledge Mavens, I made a video of how to create Battleship in Python, a single player game. So in this video, we're going to make some advanced features and build off of that one. So let's first talk about, well, first I'll give you a demo and then we will talk about the advanced features. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and show you what it looks like. All right. So first of all, we have a computer that generates five different types of ships on their board. So there is a two uh, battleship. There's a three, there's another three, there's a four and there's a five. So that's what the computer does. And then you get an empty board and you are now asked to place your battleships. So the first thing it's going to ask you, do you want horizontal or vertical? I'm going to make this easy. So I'm just going to say horizontal. And then the row, I'm going to choose upper left corner and just work my way down. So one, and then the column, I'm going to choose a, and so now you can see I've placed my first battleship of two, and then it says place the battleship with three. So I'm just going to do the same, but I'm going to do in the, the second row. And I'm going to keep going until I've placed all my battleships. Oh, I did not place that one in the correct. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So all my battleships are placed two, three, 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 four, and five. Now I'm presented with an empty board that will allow me to guess. So if you're familiar with battleship, you have two boards. You have one that has your battleships and that's basically what the computer or the other person or player in this case would be the computer. And then you have your board in which you are guessing that person, your hits and misses. So essentially that's what we're looking at now is the hits and misses. So if I just say, uh, row one and a, you can see here that I have missed. And then if I scroll up here, the computer did a random guess and it has got a hit. So let's keep going. Let's go to a, I'm just going to go down the list. Okay. I got a hit three a, I got a mess. So I'll just assume the next one is going to be right there. So that's two B. Yep. And then we'll go two C. How about two D? Maybe it's the big one Two E. It is the big one. All right. And anyway, looking at the computer, they randomly guess and they've got one hit so far. So the objective of the game is to get all 17 hits and whoever does that first wins. All right, let's also, I want to talk about briefly about some of the differences in the last game. So in the, the first game here, the first player randomly chose five ships. So essentially what we did was we just picked out five single ships, placed them on the board and we guessed, uh, or the computer generated those and then we guessed. So now what I've added on is the five different ship types. And now the computer and the player, we all push, put those five ships on the board and then we take turns going back and forth and guessing those. And then whoever guesses them all wins. So we're going to add all those features onto this video. And then I'm going to make this in several parts because it is going to be rather lengthy. So the first one I've uh, talked about a demo, we're going to, start by placing the ship and then part of that built in, we're going to need to check to see if it fits. So for example, if you put it in the top right hand corner and it overhangs outside the grid, we want to try again. And then the next one, we want to check if there's an overlap. So if you place a ship in the middle and you place one right on top of it, we want to make sure that, that doesn't happen. Then we're going to build a function for the user input. And that's essentially for the, uh, game to ask us, where do you want to place your ships? And that would be horizontal, vertical, and then row and column. And then also the last part, we're going to check to see if all 17 are hit. And if they are, then you win. And then we're going to uh, build the turn. So that would be the computer and the player. And then we'll demo it one last time to make sure it all works. All right. So let's, uh, let's get started on the first part. So the first thing we'll do is our import. So import random. 
And now we're going to build a list and we're going to call this length, you know, just so I don't get typos because of my copilot, I'm just going to bring these over and explain them one by one. So here, length of ships, these are the ships that we saw. So our first one is a length of two, our next one's three, three, four, and five. Those are the length of the ships that we're going to place. Now we have four different kinds of boards. And how I talked about in the beginning, the player is going to have two boards, one that they're placing their ships, one that they're guessing, and the computer is going to have the same thing, one that they're placing, one that they're guessing. And then uh, one I called a guess board, and one is basically that computer hidden board that we shouldn't be able to see that we're guessing against. All right, and then the last uh, global variable here that I'm using is a list or a dictionary of converting letters to numbers. So what what we're going to do to make this easy grid is on the side we're going to have a row. So that's 1 through 7, 1 through 8. And then on the top we're going to have letters A through H. Now in order to store those in a list the computer can use, we're going to need to convert those A through H into a list or a numbers 0 through 7. So that's what this does, is it converts 0 to 7 through from A to H. All right, now let's uh, let's just start by doing our functions that I talked about. So you can kind of give a high level view of what everything looks like. So first thing is going to be print board and we'll be passing in a board there. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pass for now until we get these all built out. And then the next one is gonna be called place ships. And I'm going to pass in board is there as well and pass that one. The next one is going to be uh, check if ship fits or fit. And then uh, I'll pass on that. We'll pass that one there. And then the next one is going to be check overlaps or we'll do ship overlaps and we'll pass that one for now the next one will be user input and then we have a couple more we want to do is count hit ships then turn we're going to be passing in board there and then the last one would be our run while true Okay, so that's kind of our blueprint of all the functions. If you remember these here that I talked about, we're going to try to uh, run these through. Now, I won't be able to run them as I go just because there will be certain dependencies. But what I can do is I can show you the demo and what part that we're building at that time. So let's start by doing the print board. And I'll just explain each block here as I go. I don't want to type this out manually uh, because I do get typos and I already debugged it. So hopefully this will work for you. All right. So first we're going to do is print board and we're going to pass in board. So that could be any one of these four that we're going to potentially give it. The next line here is printing. And that's basically going to just be a header, the column that tells us and it asks us what we want to choose. Then this line here is a separator just to separate between the that and the board. Then we're going to start with row number one. So we're going to we're not going to start with zero. We're going to print the row number one. That's easy for us as human readable. Then we're going to loop through board. So we're going to say for row in board. So whatever board we give it, for example, would be the guest board. Then we're going to loop through the row and we're going to print. So what I've got here is percent %d, which is decimal, percent %s is string, and then format that as, and what over here, 
we take each row that we're looping through. So essentially we're going to create this grid and we're going to loop through and we're going to join a separator. So each row through eight, we're going to have a separator of a pipe and then we're going to print that row number starting with one. And then as we do each one of those iterations, we're going to increase by one. So I can show you this if I print board and we'll just do player board. That's fine. And we should be able to run this. Uh, let's see if I need to comment this out for one minute. All right, now you can kind of see what the board looks like. Here's our letters, and that letters to columns will basically change it to rows. And then you can see a separator with empty spaces in between. So that's what our board looks like. All right, now we can move on to start to place our ships. And I'm going to go until the first part of our next function. And then we'll move to that function. Okay. So here what we got is place ships. We're going to pass in the board, whichever board that we're wanting to place it on. It could be the computer or it could be uh, our board. What we want to do is first loop through the links of the ships. So this list up here, we're going to loop through each one of them. So we're going to place those on the board. So first it's going to be two, then three, then three, then four, then five. So that's what we're doing here is for ship length and length of ships. So ship length here, first one is going to be two in our list. Now what we want to do is loop until the ship finds or fits or doesn't overlap. So first we want to look for, does it fit? Okay. So we'll, we'll do a function uh, check fit. In order to do that, what we want to do is do a while loop and a while loop will keep retrying until we get a fit. Cause if we don't get a fit, we don't want our turn to be over. We want to keep trying. All right. And then the first block here is we're going to check to see if, is this a computer? Cause we're going to trade the computer is going to do randomly. We're going to choose. So what we're doing here is we're saying, is this a computer? All right. So if it is, we're going to do a bunch of random stuff here. We're going to do three. We need the orientation, the row and the column. So what we have is orientation. We're going to randomly choose between horizontal and vertical. And then ran the row is going to be between zero and seven. And the column is zero and seven. So we're going to, through the computer is going to be zero to seven. It's going to convert to one through eight on the board. Actually, we'll get to that part when we get to the computer or when we get to ours. So now we want to check if it fits. So we're going to pass in a few variables here. We're going to pass in the ship length, the row, the column, and the orientation. So we just figured those out. Ship length was two. The row, column, and orientation are all defined here as random numbers. So let's go ahead and build the ship fit function. All right, the way that this works is we passed in the ship length, the row, the column, and the orientation that we've grabbed from up here. All right. Now, first, what we want to do is check the orientation. Is it horizontal? If it is, we'll run this. If it's not, if it's vertical, we'll run this down here. So for horizontal, we'll say the column plus the ship length is greater than eight. So what we're doing here is the column we're going to randomly choose. Let's say the column is zero and the ship length is two. So does that, is that greater than eight? No, then it's going to fit in the column. But let's say the column that you, that is chosen is seven and the ship length is two. Is that greater than eight? Yes, it is. So it's going to return false. So essentially that's not going to work. It's going to come back here to this while loop and try again, come back here and say, okay, let's say we did two and two, that's four. Okay. Then it's going to return true. And so we'll come back up here and we're going to uh, return true. So we want up here equal to true. I believe. No, actually this is fine. This is fine. If it returns true, it will continue. Okay. And then the same thing for horizontal. So if it's not horizontal, then it's vertical. So we'll take the row zero through seven and the ship length, which is two. So let's say that it is two, the rows two, the links two, it's not greater than eight, then it would return true and we would continue 
into this state here. Now, there isn't really a good way to demo this, but let's see if we can give it a shot. All right, so we're gonna run it. And let's say that we, well, let's do a debug here. So we got uh, da, 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 check if ship fits. We'll stop the debugger right there and we'll run. Okay. All right, so let's run the next step. You know, uh, we probably want to run this. Right now the computer's generating a board. So let's just keep going until the user turn. So right now the computer is placing, uh, we could just continue playing like this. And you can see it keeps checking. All right, so now we are on our part. So let's say we choose horizontal and we'll go to the next step and the next step and the next step. All right, so now we want to say we're going to choose row one, uh, and then we're going to do eight, so it goes out of bounds. So let's do column H. Okay, so it is in the column H, so let's go ahead and continue. It's going to convert it to, to seven. All right, so now it's going to return that. Now it's going to go into check if, sh if ship fits, okay? So it comes here and it says in orientation horizontal, it should be yes. And is so I picked out seven plus two is greater than nine. So it should return false. There it is. It's returning false. And now it's going to go back to check ship fits. And so it should ask me again. Yeah. So it's reprompting me place a ship with the length of two. And there we are. So that's how that one works. Let's take a pause in this video. And in the next video, we will build out the remaining two functions, the check if overlap and the user input. See you soon.